antenna into a better one? And are you sick of not getting good reception? I can see what you mean. Take a look at my bunny ear channel. By bunny ears, I mean... Look at this. This is Family Guy. And it's not coming in clear. I don't like my bunny ear antenna. Because it doesn't give me as good as reception I was, as I would have liked. This is not even a bunny ear antenna. If you're like this, then I'm, today I'm going to show you how to make a good antenna. Dixon, and this is Campedia TV. If you're like me, you don't like a bunny ear antenna at all. Because, look at what kind of reception it gives me. What if I want to watch Family Guy? Well, I might be getting fairly decent reception. Look what happens when I turn the sound up. Bunny ear antenna, or single antennas like these, just can't simply give you the reception that commercial satellite or cable TV can. But today, I'm going to show you how to build your own homemade antenna so that your channels look like this instead of this. Listen up as I teach you how to make your own TV antenna that works like a satellite dish. To make your satellite dish, or, or one of sorts, you'll need the following items. About 10 feet of a copper wire. Don't worry, we're not going out and asking you to buy a bunch of cables and 10 feet of cables, just a copper wire. Preferably insulated. Don't worry, that'll only come to about $2 at the most expensive stores. Next thing you need is scissors, electrical tape or duct tape, a roll of aluminum foil, a strong cardboard tube, no you can't use a paper towel tube unless you can find some way to reinforce it so it's stronger, some thick cardboard, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to buy some thick cardboard just from a box other than a cereal box. Or one that's thin like a cereal box. Number seven is a magnet or ferrite rod. That's what they use in radios. Number eight is an optional six volt lantern battery lead. You know, the thing that you put the wire into or the lantern. And about 20 or 30 minutes of your time. Let's make the antenna. What you need to do is to make your ferrite, ferrite or magnet antenna. As you may already use radios because the signals from AM radio stations are so weak that they have to be amplified by something. And that's no other than a turbine like ferrite effect. In other words, it boosts your signal. FM radios don't require the ferrite because their radio signals are strong enough to go without it. The thing the TV doesn't have is a ferrite. And since TV these are much like radios. We can easily create the TV and the radio effect by, in other words, we can boost your TV's reception signal by adding a ferry antenna. Here's how we'll do it. And this is just step one of making your antenna. Let's do it. Your antenna, you're gonna wanna have, you're gonna wanna strip off about, well, first you're gonna wanna cut about one and a half feet off of your hopefully insulated copper wire. If it's not insulated, that's fine. Now, take your copper wire and skin the insulation off of it until you have a bare copper wire. It'll take me a little while. It'll take you about maybe three to five minutes. So we'll stop the camera and come back when it's done. Once you're done, take the magnet, depending on what magnet you're using, somehow coil the wire around the magnet. As you can see, but leave out a space so it can be connected to the antenna. You'll see what I mean in a second. In the end, your ferret antenna should end up looking something like this. Remember, you can use a magnet, too. With one wire at the end here, one wire at the end here. Now, we're going to do something, do something that Mark Erickson would call a 
we're going to coat this with electrical tape or some other kind of tape. Mark Erickson said that electrical tape conducts electricity in his Infinite Solutions How to Recharge Batteries episode. Well, that is complete garbage. Electrical tape does not conduct electricity. It insulates it. So anyways, whatever kind of tape you want is pretty much okay. Electrical tape and duct tape work best. Here I'm using masking tape. So coat coat your ferrite or mag magnet with scotch tape. That'll keep the wires intact. You might want to make a second ferrite antenna. It might get slightly better reception, but don't make three. It'll make too much power and overload your system. Well, it won't overload it, but it'll... In other words, it'll start to go backwards. So it won't make it better. So make a tight little bundle here. Not, not, not too tight. So you've basically made a TV amplifier right there. Is what this little plastic ferrite thing is. Now we're going to start work on the antenna. Next, you'll need to get a sheet of cardboard and cut out by about a foot by half a foot. Like this. This is probably about 11 inches. But, oh well. Now, so it's in the center of the square of the cardboard. Now take a tube, it's in forest of course, and um, put, just take the tube, and then I'll show you what, one of these tubes, you can easily make one by shoving, or I mean if you don't have a strong tube, you can make one by just shoving the second tube inside the first one. Now let's do next. Now take the copper wire and cut around two to two, cut about one centimeter of both tips off. Step. Now, put it into the pipe and tape it to the top so it looks like this. Put the wire through the hole and then make a second hole so it all looks like that and that. Now, tape the pole, the tape on, put the amplifier, the ferrite thing, into the wire that was coming up. You know, the one on the bottom. My cord is connected to the cable that comes down there, and then it, you know, it goes under there and it connects to this ferrite, which you can tape the wires and everything. And now you're going to need to do something else. So the thickest cardboard you can find to be able to trap the particles to your satellite dish. About three layers of aluminum foil product. Don't be afraid to tape it a little bit, even on the front. Now you're going to want to put it so that the wi this wire is poking through the cardboard. But if you if it's not touching the aluminum, it won't work. Now, so tape it to this with that wire touching the aluminum someplace. Yeah, another sheet of thick cardboard, preferably about six to eight inches long and about two inches across. Bend about one inch at the top, so it looks like this. Now tape it to keep it bent in place. It's enforced. Now attach it with tape right here five sheets of aluminum foil. It needs to be thick. Don't be afraid to tape it. Now attach it to the base like this with some tape. Go. Resemble anything? Yep, it looks a lot like a satellite dish and that's what it act is acting like. You might have to reinforce it from time to time as this might be very weak. Now let's connect it to your t our antenna up. As you can see I have it focused on the digit the analog, you know, the ferrite rod. Now connect the wire to the ferrite rod. This is the wire that is going to be running into your TV. Tape it with some tape. Let's plug it into your TV, where the cable TV line or your coaxial antenna goes to connection with some tape. About. Pretty clear, huh? You'll still have to move your antenna around to get better reception. You don't luck out on that. You can add to my design, or make your own design, or check out my next video, which I'll post a name to on the YouTube comments page. Till now, I'm Eric Dixon, and don't be afraid to make your own design. Or you can connect that to that. It's gonna be done, but here's one final tip. 
put a put a big book on your antenna or TV antenna.